Hey everyone, and welcome to RoboCast. Today we're going to do a deep dive into the story of our showrunner, Daniel. A very multi-talented guy. He really is. UX director, creative director, game designer. You name it, he's done it. Pretty much. Yeah. So, what we're going to be looking at today is the challenges of ADHD in the workplace. Yeah, a lot of people struggle with that. For sure. And we're going to use Daniel's story and what he shared with us to uh, kind of see what that's like. And hopefully we can help other people who have ADHD. Exactly. Not feel so alone. Also help other people who don't have ADHD to kind of understand what it's like. And maybe even help Daniel find a new job. That would be amazing. Yep. So Daniel's life, wow, a lot of ups and downs. Yeah, he's been through a lot. He's been homeless. He's had these great jobs, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So one thing I want to start off with is back in 2008, Daniel actually experienced homelessness. Uh, and this was due to a flood. I can't even imagine. Yeah. And at the time, he was married with a newborn baby. That must have been incredibly difficult. <laughs> it really was, yeah. That feeling of not being able to provide for your family. And, you know, we see this come up in Daniel's story again and again. Really? Yeah, so like fast forward to 2023, Jan yeah. is now working as a UX director. Okay. Sounds pretty good, okay. right? Okay, yeah. But at the same time, he's dealing with just intense burnout. Oh, wow. And this is when, at 41 years old, he finally gets diagnosed with ADHD. All this time. All this time, yeah. Yeah. And he describes some of the symptoms he was going through, like shaking, leg bouncing, biting his fingers. Wow, so physical manifestation. Yeah, changes to his sleep, appetite. It's amazing how many people go undiagnosed with ADHD for so long. It really is. They suffer in silence and just try to make it work. Totally. Yeah. So in Daniel's case, uh, he was diagnosed with what's called inattentive ADHD. Okay. And this really affects executive functioning. And basically, it's like, imagine if the CEO of your brain was just... Not a good one. Not a good one. Struggling with planning, organization, starting tasks, you know, managing time. No, that'd be tough, especially at work. Especially at work. Right. right. So it's not about laziness. No, not at all. Or like a lack of intelligence. Definitely not. It's just that your brain is wired differently. Right. And it makes it difficult to do things that are easy for neurotypical people. To Daniel's credit, he's really been addressing his ADHD. He a attended this dual diagnosis program. Okay. Started taking medication. Okay. And he's also been exploring different coping mechanisms like acceptance and commitment therapy, ACT. Sometimes like he's really taking charge of his health. Yeah, he's really proactive. But even with all this, work is still really challenging for him. Yeah, because of the ADHD. Yeah. And this leads to what we might call like the ADHD employment paradox. Okay, I'm intrigued. So Daniel's brilliant, right? Yeah. He's built huge online communities, led as a UX director, even launched these ambitious projects like a VR game. Yeah, he's super accomplished. Right. So where's the paradox? Hmm. Good question. He has all this potential. He does. But like so many others with ADHD, he runs into these problems with how rigid and demanding a lot of jobs are. I see. So it's not the lack of ability. Exactly. It's the environment. Exactly. Okay. That makes sense. That explains why he's been so frustrated with corporate jobs. Right. Like he talks about feeling unsupported. Right. Not having his expectations met and then just burning out. Yeah, I can see that. Even though he has the skills and the experience. He's even been sidelined on projects, even though he was the expert. It's crazy, right? It is. It's like they're punishing him for thinking differently. Yeah. And that's such a common experience for people with ADHD. For sure. They have these amazing strengths. Creativity, innovative thinking, problem solving, and it's not appreciated. Exactly. In fact, it's almost stifled because a lot of workplaces value conformity and linear processes. It's true. So how do we fix this? How do we help people like Daniel thrive? To get a better understanding of how to answer that, I think we should delve into Daniel's own reflections on his struggles and how he's tried to deal with them. Daniel's ADHD was affecting his work life. Yeah, even though he's clearly got so much talent. He really does. So to dig a little deeper into this, we're going to look at some of the stuff Daniel's written. Okay. And some of his Reddit posts, because he's been really open about his struggles. That's great. Yeah. And it gives us this window into, like, what it's actually like to live with ADHD every day. So, for instance, Daniel talks a lot about how difficult social interactions are for him. That's pretty common with ADHD, right? Yeah. Daniel also talks about feeling misunderstood. Oh. Like he's always trying to fit into this neurotypical box. Like you have to pretend to be someone you're not. Exactly. He even uses the word eccentricities to describe himself. I like that word. Yeah, it's kind of cute, right? Yeah, it's quirky. But it shows that these eccentricities are actually coming from real neurological differences. Right. They're not just personality quirks. Exactly. So, for example, rejection sensitivity. 
Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Huge. Mm. Emotional dysregulation mm -hmm. and just difficulty communicating. Those are all common with ADHD. Yeah, and they make things at work so much harder. Because you're interacting with people all the time. Right, and it can lead to misunderstandings, conflicts. You just feel inadequate. Can you give an example? Like, what does rejection sensitivity actually look like at work? Sure. Like, imagine a coworker says something offhand. Okay. Not even meaning anything by it. Yeah. And you... Because you have rejection sensitivity, yeah. you take it as like a personal attack. Oh, like they're criticizing you. Yes. Or you're in a meeting and your emotions are all over the place. Oh. And you just can't get your thoughts out clearly. It is so frustrating. It's the worst. Like the volume is turned up on all your emotions. Yeah, everything feels so much more intense. Yeah, exactly. And it's not just work. Daniel's talked about how this affects his personal relationships too. This is like pervasive. It really is. And I got to say... What's really impressive about Daniel is his resilience. That's so important. You know, even with all these obstacles, he's still chasing his passions. He wants to solve big problems. That's inspiring. It is. He wants to make a difference in the world. We need more people like that. We do. Maybe traditional jobs aren't the answer for people with ADHD. What do you mean? Like, maybe they'd be better off doing something else. Like what? Well, we talked about freelancing right. or even starting their own business. Okay, so more autonomy. Exactly. More control over your schedule, your environment, what you work on. That does sound good for someone with ADHD. Right. And it fits with Daniel's desire to contribute. To something meaningful, yeah. But let's get practical here. If Daniel were to go the entrepreneur route, what kind of business could he start? Hmm, good question. Well, he's great at building online communities. He is. Remember those huge communities he created? So maybe something that connects people online. Like a social network for a specific interest? Yeah. Or a platform for learning together. Or maybe he could create educational resources about ADHD. That's a great idea. Right? He could help so many people. Exactly. He could even consult with companies. Oh, to make them more ADHD friendly. Exactly. That's such a good idea. I know, right? Yeah. But even if he doesn't go solo, there are jobs out there that could work for him. What kind of jobs? We need to think about roles that value innovation, problem solving. Creative thinking. Yeah. Exactly. Where being different is an advantage. I like that. So things like strategic planning, product development. Yeah. User experience design. He's already got that. Right. Even research and development. Oh, yeah. Anything where he can explore ideas. So, it's all about the right environment. It really is. Where they encourage you to experiment, you can think outside the box. And where you have some independence, but still get to be part of a team. It's not just about changing the person. It's about changing the system, too. Yeah, creating workplaces where everyone can thrive. And that brings us back to neurodiversity. Right. We need to accept and celebrate different brains. They're not deficits, they're strengths. Exactly. Yeah. And when we support these differences, we get amazing results. Innovation, breakthroughs, new ideas. It's a win-win for everyone. All right, so we've talked about Daniel's journey, all the challenges, the need for workplaces to change. But we left off with a big question. Right. What kind of job would actually work for someone like Daniel? Exactly. So let's try to answer that. We know that a typical nine to five corporate job, all that structure, probably not the best fit. Yeah. He needs something more flexible. Right. And remember, he's all about solving those big problems. Thinking outside the box. Yeah. And collaborating with others. But he's also talked about how much he hates being micromanaged. Totally. Yeah. Like not feeling supported creatively stifled it's got to be the right environment for sure yeah. so what's the alternative well we talked about freelancing right maybe even starting his own business being an entrepreneur that's right so more autonomy exactly he can set his own schedule work where he wants choose his own projects and that really lines up with what he's passionate about making a difference <laughs> in the world right so to our listeners out there yeah what do you guys think if you have ADHD, we want you to know you're not alone. Your brain is wired differently? That's not a bad thing. It's a superpower. And if you don't have ADHD, hopefully this has given you a new perspective. Understanding and empathy are so important. They really are. we got to create a world that works for everyone. Exactly. And hey, if anyone out there knows of a job opportunity that sounds perfect for Daniel. Reach out. Let us know. We'd love to help connect him with the right opportunity. This deep dive might just land him his dream job. We hope you found this exploration insightful. Definitely thought-provoking. And maybe even a little inspiring. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget to check out Daniel's YouTube channel. Lots of great content over there. And subscribe to RoboCast for more deep dives like this one. Until next time, keep those processors humming.